Many students find the natural science passage the most challenging on the ACT. It's intimidating because it contains a lot of technical jargon and unfamiliar terms. But the test maker doesn't expect you to be a physicist, biologist, chemist, or astronomer. Instead, the ACT is testing your ability to answer questions using the passage. Just as you do for all ACT passages, use the Kaplan method for reading comp. For now, let's focus on the first step, actively reading the passage and creating a passage map. Even though the natural science passages often contain unfamiliar terms, active reading is still key. Don't dwell on the details. They'll only slow you down as you're reading the passage. Focusing on the details takes too long. A good passage map will help you find answers much faster than reading deeply into the passage. Remember, the ACT is an open book test. The answer is always in the passage, so read for the purpose of each paragraph and don't try to memorize information or store all of those little details in your head. Since you only have 35 minutes to read four passages and answer 40 questions, it's best to focus on why the author wrote the passage and on the main idea of each paragraph. Save time and create a strong passage map by marking important information in the passage. By using unique markings for different categories of information, you can easily locate the answer to a question without having to read the entire passage again. For instance, to keep straight who says what, circle people's names as you come across them. If you start to see a lot of numbers, put a box around them so they're easy to locate. If you find a key detail, you can underline or start, making it easier to find the answer later. When mapping a reading comp passage, don't overdo it. Limit what you mark and make your marks unique. Let's say you simply underlined all names, numbers, and important details in the passage while reading through it. When you go back to research a question, it will be difficult to find the information you need quickly. Keep in mind, if you underline everything because you think it's important, nothing will look important. Let's practice by mapping a passage. Take a look at the first paragraph of this passage. Just by glancing at the first sentence, you already know the topic, the ozone layer. There are a couple of numbers listed and you're told that the threat is serious. The main point of this paragraph is this serious threat. You didn't need to mark much in this paragraph. Remember, always write your paragraph notes in the margin. It'll make you more efficient when researching answers. In the next paragraph, there's a number in the first sentence, so put a box around it. You learn that ozone is quite small. The last sentence simply reiterates this point with an example. So now you have the main point of the second paragraph. There's no need to dwell on what sea level pressure is or why the ozone layer is only a small part of the atmosphere. Instead, stay focused on why the author wrote this paragraph. Here, the author is telling you that the ozone is small and giving an illustration to exemplify that fact. Now on to the third paragraph. In this paragraph, you learn who has been studying the ozone layer. There's Sidney Chapman and the World Meteorological Organization and the Dobson Network and the United Nations Environment Program. Phew, that's a lot. What you need to keep in mind is that it's not important to recognize these names or to have prior knowledge about any of these people or groups. If a question is asked about them, you'll know exactly where to find the answer. Finally, take a brief note, people studying ozone, and move on to the next paragraph. Timing is important. On to paragraph four. Right away you see a date, so put a box around it. The rest of the paragraph discusses reductions and increases in the ozone layer at different times of the year. You can easily sum up the main point of this paragraph by using the word in the first sentence, variations. Sometimes you only need one word to remind you of the paragraph's purpose. You can see that dates are popping up in paragraph 5. Don't worry. Remember the why is more important than the what. This paragraph may look lengthy, but it's mostly details. What's important in this paragraph is the purpose, or the reason the author wrote it. The author wrote this paragraph to tell you what is responsible for the hole in the ozone and to make the public aware of this fact. Paragraph 6 is shorter 
and contains a lot of very detailed information about dollars, numbers of people, and countries. Don't slow down to figure out the deep meaning of all of this data. You can look at this paragraph and say to yourself, there's a lot of money, people, and countries involved in CFCs. If a question asks about this data, your paragraph note will guide you back to this paragraph. Then you can reread the information. The gist of the paragraph is that there's a lot of money, people, and countries making CFCs. Remember, there are only 10 questions associated with this passage. The test makers can't possibly ask you about every little detail in the passage. They're selective about the questions they ask, so you should be selective about how you read it. Take a look at the rest of the passage. Note the key words and the ideas that were marked. Your passage map doesn't need to look exactly like this, but should note the location of key words and main ideas. Just as you would practice for any sporting event or rehearse for a play or recital, you must practice active reading and passage mapping. So spend some time honing these skills in guided practice.